here is the serious business which really should be understood there are five sweeping declarations in the surah number one the one verse five the famous verse or the infamous verse of sword they call it the verse of the sword kill the infidels and then the second is the bar on the pagans from entering the kaaba we know that mecca there is an area mushriks are not supposed what to travel there now a lot of people look at why i mean we can answer by can i go and pray in the vaticans you know can i do that also there is no masajid in the vaticans they don't allow any masjids in the vaticans another famous verse which a lot of people use is commanding to fight the people of the book until they surrender and pay the jizya which is verse 29 and then that huge verse rebuking the people of the book for venerating the saints for having the culture of saints and then the final announcement is barring the muslims to ask allah to forgive those who died as non-muslims you're getting that a lot of people say where is the mercy you can even make dua for the people who are dead yeah but he died as a non-muslim there is nothing i can do about it you know? i'm going to give you some time because these are really important for us as muslims living in the west to be able to speak about them don't shy away don't become apologetic because they have a historic context and they are tied to that historic context quranic context and historic context and the moment that you take them out of that context then you're going to conclude the wrong conclusions ready to deal with the first one all right <clears throat> A little introduction here. The different groups who campaign against Islam and who are ever keen to dismiss the Quran as a divine book raise these five misconceptions, rather allegations. In almost every occasion, they have to attack Islam. They normally list these five one after another in their anti-Islamic campaigns. Therefore, it is very essential to explain each of these, especially uh, us, you know, living in, in, in the West amongst non-Muslims. I mean, those people are entitled to understand what this means. So they feel safe about you, right? They don't think that you're going to kill them because if you read this in the Quran, kill the infidels and these guys are not Muslims, then they may assume that you can do that you're getting the point in fairness to them we should be able to explain that first and, and I really want you to understand this it must be understood that Islam came to become a way of life you understand for individuals minorities and state alike that is why the Quran was revealed in 23 years. And within those 23 years, the community evolved from one person to what? To an ummah going to fight another superpower, to a superpower. So there is evolution, 23 years. You're getting that. So the Quran presented different evolving models for individuals and for communities throughout the 23 years i hope you guys understand my mind here you're getting it you understand so like subhanallah why in the world the prophet needed to call to islam for two years just in secret let's sneak into the house of al-arqam ibn abi al-arqam on the suburbs out there okay let's subhanallah don't we have people living in russia when it was fully communist that means what you can live islam 
but that's the stage you adopt. You're getting it. Now, the Prophet giving you an example here. This is how you live Islam in secret. Like in China, right now we hear about, but those people should be taught how to live Islam in what? In secret. And that's why there was a need for what? The two years. Oh, sneaking up, going down. Okay, let's read the revelation. Anybody watching us? They used to do that. The Prophet used to do that. Later on, okay, you know what? Let's go after the families. Let's make it family. It should be family thing. Okay, you know what? Hamza accepted Islam and Umar. Mm, what do you think? Yeah, let's, let's go out public. Okay, guys. We're out there. We're Muslims. Now, when you do this, you have to be patient. Because their retribution or their reaction will escalate. And subhanallah, to reach the top of the line. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ was protected for years by his uncle Abu Talib. His uncle dies. Guess, guess Abu Talib dies. And guess who takes on the leadership of Bani Hashim? La, Abu Lahab. <laughs> so Abu Talib, look, because the Prophet, the, 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 Allah wanted the Prophet to live that stage of what? Being thrown with rocks? People wanting to kill him? And he's patient. And this is actually the stage we're living now. If, you, if, you're, if you're wondering which stage do we belong to, that's the stage we're living. Here you go. No problem. May Allah guide you. May Allah guide you. What are you going to do? I mean, you don't have... Then, immigrate, then migration to Medina, a state established. We have a president, Rasulullah sallallahu I'm sorry I'm using these term, terms, I'm, I'm really trying to bring. But we have a president, and you know what? In, in, our, in our Muslim country, there are Christian and Jews. How are we going to deal with them? Should we force them? No. No, you can't force them. You can, they can practice their religion, freedom. We can't force people to accept Islam. As long as they abide by... And then you're getting people attacking you. What are you going to do? Yeah, you got to defend yourself. You're getting it. So, when you look at Surah At-Tawbah, you're looking at the final what? Model. Now, you cannot bring that final model now and the verses re revealed in that final model and apply to what? To America 2020. You can't do that. You can't do that. Then you're taking things out of what? Out of context. You're getting the point or no? No. So the Quran presented different evolving models for individuals, communities, throughout the 23 years, in order to guide us until the end of time, in implementing the suitable model to our time. This explains to you why digesting the seerah is a key to understand the Quran. As a matter of fact, the scholars, they said that if you don't know the 23 years seerah, don't come near the Quran. Don't, because you're not going to be able to understand it. You're going to take things out of context. The revelation dictated the action and the responses of the Prophet as he progressed. It dealt with a gradual rise of the Prophet from a rejected messenger with barely a handful of followers in his native town Mecca where he preached for some 12 years to an immigrant fleeing to Medina and finally the most revered, admired, obeyed Prophet the whole of the Arabia are listening to him. So the Quran dealt with what? So this particular chapter deals with what? With the final what? The final stage. So you have to understand the verses in it. If you have the final stage, you're getting it. Don't be apologetic about the Quran. Don't, don't tell, oh, that verse is nothing. No, it's in the Quran. But it deals with a, with a different scenario than our scenario here. 
طب let's deal with the first one uh, I, th I think the, the, the point here is, is, is uh, I, I think it, it's very important to, uh, to look at the, the final uh, bullet here. Hence, any attempt to cherry pick its element in isolation and to judge the whole on their basis will indeed be making a mockery of the revelation and totally untenable. You can refute it easily. Let's deal with the first verse, the first, which is, they call it the sword, ayat al saif that's called. What verse are we talking about? Verse number five. But when the sacred months are past, kill the infidels. They use the infidels. I, I wrote pagans, but I use the, in Fox News, they use the infidels. Wherever they, you find them, imagine this. I mean, obviously, this verse, I mean, if you take it out of context, that's what it means. You can't really find another meaning to it but that. But if you take it out of context, capture them, surround them, watch for them in every lockout. But look, subhanAllah, if they repent again. Obviously, if you take this verse in isolation of its historical and Quranic context, you will understand. Tayyip. Let's understand the historical here. Who are those people? We know that the Prophet وسلم, at one time, two years on the seventh year, he attempted to go and perform Umrah with few companions. 1400. The people of Mecca told him, no. What was the result of this? A treaty or a truce called Hudaybiyah was established. We're at peace with one another for 10 years. Now this verse talks about the people who did not honor this truce. You're getting that? It's not talking about, because in the same verses, as for those who fulfilled their covenant, finish the term, finish the 10 years. And they are pagans too, they are infidels too. Some of these tribes, after the, uh, the truce of Al-Hudaybiyah, they still fought the Muslims and they would blot. They broke the covenants with the Prophet, with the Muslim state. That's a state, that's a united nation recognized agreement. Right? United nation recognized agreement, correct? They violated that agreement. Then, and not only this, don't do this right away. You know what? D during the season of Hajj, which is a very famous day in the Arabia, the day of Arafah, everyone knows about it. Send Ali ibn Abi Talib, initially it was Abu Bakr, send Ali ibn Abi Talib and make an announcement in the Haram. Okay, guys, this tribe, this tribe, this tribe, violated the treaty with us they have four months after that they are at war with us it's a declared war but why sit for them and wherever they snipe them it was the tradition of the arabs if you do something wrong and you go and sit next to the kaaba no one can come near you you can kill somebody outside and you walk and sit next to the haram, no one can dare come near you. Until what? Because that's the sacredness of the Kaaba. As if the Muslims are asking, what if those people go and sit next to the... Fight them there. Wherever you find them. You're getting that? That's the historical context. But what about the Quranic context? That's right here. Look at this. Let's look at the preceding and the succeeding verses indicate that it was addressed to those pagan tribes who were repeatedly breaking the Hudaybiyah peace treaty. This is, however, totally lost in their flat reading, whether in the original Arabic translation, it doesn't show. You have to go, you have to be aware of the what? Of the background. You have to be a scholar to be understand, to be able to get this. 
Add to this, a warning was given on the day of the great Hajj. Look at this. Bara'atum min Allahi wa rasoolihi ila alladheena ahadtum min al-mushrikeen. Fasihu fil ardi arba'ata ashuri wa alamu annakum ghayru mu'ajizi Allahi wa anna Allaha mukhzil kafirin. Wa adhanum min Allahi wa rasoolihi ila al-nas yawm al-hajj al-akbar. أن الله بريء من المشركين ورسوله. clear. look at the verses one to three. now look at the command to fight. I think I can explain that. look at this. and the evidence for this, however. The pagans who were honoring their treaty of peace, not helping anyone against the Muslims, were to be given time until the treaty expires, which is the 10 years, Hudaybiyah. Oh. For that's the evidence. Did we clarify that? Salaam alaikum. Did we clarify that? Clear. So, can you now take this and bring it and apply it to America 2020? You can do that. It's confined to a certain time.